Let's find out exactly what this sinister sounding EUI64 process is. Earlier in a lab, we statically applied the full IP version 6 address to our interface, and that's one way to do it. Nothing wrong with it. We also were able to use zero compression so we didn't have to type as many numbers. And we've been statically configuring IP addresses on interfaces for a long, long time, so it really doesn't bother us. However, if you're in a situation where you just want the address to be unique, and you don't need to assign a certain specific address to the interface, you can use the EUI64 option with the IPv6 address command to come up with a unique address. Now it's not going to be exactly what you say it's going to be because you're leaving half of it up to the router. And I bet you can already guess what that other half is going to be. But let's do it live and make sure we see what's going on. First we'll take off the full address that I've already got on there. I'm just going to go through my history here real quick and that's it. And we do not have an IPv6 address on there right now. Let's run show IPv6 interface fast 00 just for fun. Uh, and you'll see there's nothing to show because <laughs> I took the address off. And of course, if you've taken the address off, you're not going to have a global unicast. You're not going to have a link local. You're not going to be joining these groups that we haven't talked about yet. You're not going to be doing any of that fun stuff. So we got to go back and put an address on there. And it starts just like a normal v6 address because you'll notice there's no mention here of EUI64. What you're going to do is put the prefix here. But notice that I did not say specifically, okay, you know, here is the address we're going to use because this isn't a full address. Actually, it would be an all zeros address, which you're not supposed to use because that is a subnet, subnet any cast. Let me show you exactly what happens. If I try to put that in, yeah, if I try to put this in for an address, it's going to tell me I can't because what I've done here is I've put all zeros for the interface identifier part of the address or, or the actual individual host portion. And what the router is going to tell you is that you should be careful because this is a subnet router anycast. I will make a separate video of this and you'll see that later in this portion of the course. But I want you to see that you can't just leave that all at zeros. Because earlier, remember, we had a one in there. But if you set that to zero, all zeros, the router is going to give you a warning. Now, it, it's going to let me do it. Uh, it will let me do it. It will leave this address on, so I'm going to have to take it off. But uh, again, it's not recommended that you do that. I will make a separate video on that topic here for you in this part of the course, like I mentioned. But let me go ahead and take that off. I wanted to show you that now because it's real easy to hit enter right there, and you don't want to do that yet. What you want to do is use this EUI64 option. But I wanted you to see, it's like, hey, if this is legal, let's find out why. Because when you see the CR, you know it's a legal command. It's a legal command, but it may not be one you want to use. What we're going to stick with is EUI64 with no options. Huzzah. So let's take that no off the front. Did I take the address off? Yes, the address is gone. And we will get rid of that. And that's it. So we don't see anything real strange going on. Let's go ahead and run our favorite show command. And you can see that it does now have a global unicast address. We've got plenty of things to be shown. Uh, it's showing the subnet here. The global unicast address, the second half of that should look familiar. 20E, D7FF, FEA4, F4A0. You know what that is. Also note here at the end, it's going to show you what the subnet is, just like before, but always look all the way out here. Because when you see EUI, you know that that address was uh, finished off by the EUI64 process. Also, whenever you see this part of the link local address matching this part of the global unicast address, that's also another really good tip off. So I showed you how to take that command, excuse me, the address off. And that just makes your global unicast address the prefix followed by the interface identifier. That result is a unique address that was calculated in part by the router. So it's kind of a mixed bag. 
you know, you're not going to know exactly what it is, or maybe you don't want, maybe you just don't want to assign the full address. Maybe you just want to say to somebody, hey, I'm just going to set this router up. I just want it to have unique addresses. So if you use that prefix and then EUI64 to finish it off, the interface identifier of that interface is going to be unique and it'll just be tacked on to the end of that address. So then you have your global unicast address. Now we've seen two ways for a router interface to get its address and there's a third one that's been mentioned a bit here in iOS help that bottom choice called auto config obtain address using auto configuration that sounds dynamic to me auto dynamics that sound good to you well we're going to talk about that a little bit later this section because first we need to talk about the IP version 6 equivalent of IP version 4's address resolution protocol, the neighbor discovery protocol. Major exam points ahead. We've got four different kinds of messages flying around between our neighbors and our routers and our routers and our neighbors. And we got to know what's in each one, who's replying to who, that kind of thing. And also this does tie in later with auto configuration. So that's why I'm kind of skipping auto config for right now is that before you get to auto config, you ought to see what's going on with NDP. And NDP is on the very next video. See you there.